Hey everybody, we're back. And I've taken the weighted pan off the top and I have drained the water off by just doing a little bit of a tip and pour. So what we're left with is the boards and the paper and the plants and leaves underneath. So let's take off our boards and see what we ended up with. So since most of this paper is fairly thin, you have to be pretty careful with taking it out. Wet paper will tear pretty easily, but I can already see that we've got some color coming through from some of the flowers. That is super bright and colorful. I love this. I love this down the center where it kind of took in the murkiness of the water from between the two boards and we've really got some great prints from these leaves. And it looks like this gave a little bit of a print as well. So let's keep going and see what else we have. So I just set these off to the side and I'll compost this later. If I use alum, which I don't like using alum just because I don't like it the way it makes my hands feel or the paper feel, um, then I won't compost these plants because I'm not sure what alum does in compost, honestly. But these are some really beautiful images on this paper. Wow, that's really pretty. That's super pretty. I didn't know what we would get from the leaves. Like I said, you can get all sorts of stuff from leaves or you can get nothing at all. We may end up with more prints from leaves than we do from flowers. So that is beautiful. I will rinse all these off later. Some of these we didn't get too much here. Sometimes you get a little bit of the negative print. So it'll be color that fills in around where the leaf is pressed, but it won't be the leaf itself. It'll just be the absence of the leaf. But this is really pretty. This leaf gave us some really nice color, nice pattern. And then I like this effect where because the stem came off the page, it allowed some of the darker water to seep in. Um, I think that's really neat. And then this down here is really, really pretty. So very cool. Oop, got that guy stuck there. Ooh. And so this side also with some great prints and impressions. Oh, I don't know. This might be my favorite batch of all time. Um, I don't get to do leaf boils often in the middle of winter, but what I do is whenever someone gets a pretty bouquet of flowers from someone, or if they have the misfortune of attending a funeral and they would like some flowers as a keepsake, I will volunteer if they are willing to give me some of the flowers, I will place them in a boil so that they can keep a print of the flowers as a keepsake on paper rather than keeping dried flowers. It's just something I've done for a couple of people and they've really liked it. This is really beautiful. Um, this I think is a little bit of the thicker paper and it's almost like a pink color that's come out from some of these green leaves. I mean, just really cool. And then this right here is from this plant right here. So you can see the total print and outline of that. That's beautiful. All right, pull these off. I think this is like my, my favorite thing to do. It's like, you know, what your love language is. And mine is presents. I love opening presents. And with me, every single page that I do is like opening a present. Sometimes it's super spectacular and sometimes there's not much there at all, but I love it just the same. This is beautiful. We've got some of the pinks and yellows. Definitely a lot of different shapes in there from that plant that we looked at before. Let's see what we got on the other side. Oh, that leaf left a big print, so that's really neat. Got some off of that. It's always unexpected what you get. And I feel like sometimes the results are extremely inconsistent. I feel like it's depending on what shape the leaf is in, what type of leaf it is, how much color is in it, 
when you pick the flower, how much moisture is in it, how dry it is. Um, I laugh. I even think sometimes it's how much wine you drink when you do the process. But this one's really beautiful. A lot of bright yellow colors on that from the leaves. So the leaves are really pulling out a lot of the color. We're going to be getting more and more into the flowers down here. And I wonder if they will be quite as spectacular in color as these leaves are. Because these are gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. These will be really nice when they're dried and then I can add them into people's journals to journal on. That is if I can bear to part with them, but I do. It takes me a while. Sometimes I really just want to keep all the paper and just hoard it, but <laughs> I don't get many journals made that way. So I think we're seeing a little bit of some flower coming through because there's some blue happening here. And it looks like there's blue coming through on some of the next pages. So one of the flowers is really throwing off some blue. And with the yellow and the browns, it's really pretty. Oh, that guy left a huge print. And there's blue underneath. Oh, so gorgeous. This is why I love this so much. It's like Christmas every day. It's paper and it's gardening and it's presents all in one. And it's just probably about my favorite thing in the world to do. That is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Seriously, I might have to make myself a journal out of this instead of making journals for other people. Okay, so this blue, I think this might be a bachelor button. I'm not sure, but my goodness, that is really throwing off some really vibrant blue. That is gorgeous. And then again, you kind of have that negative effect when something's pressed really tight. This doesn't really have any color to it, but that's where this was pressing so tight that it actually is like the absence of color. And it did the same thing on the bottom sheet too. I think those sometimes are just as wonderful as the plants themselves that throw off color is when you have that almost like negative film effect. God, that blue is just popping. Oh, and see then you wonder why like some leaves throw color and some throw none at all. It's just so hit or miss. And that's really pretty. You hear a jingling in the background. It's one of my dogs. They're supposed to go downstairs, but mom is in the kitchen and the opportunity for treats is probably too much of an attraction to actually leave. That's beautiful. So these are just random leaves that I picked up from the backyard as well as some of the, I'm going to draw a blank on the name of the flower, really, really um, typical, common flower. I'm just drawing a blank. It's not a geranium, um, but they tend to throw a lot of color and that's just beautiful. I can't think of what they are but everybody has them. Ooh, look at the yellow off of that leaf. That is amazing. And then there's the absence of yellow on that leaf. Basically, two of the same leaves. And I don't know if it's because one was the positive and one was the negative, or you know what I mean? Like one was the top and one was the underside. I don't know, because when you look at this, It must be something to do with the underside of the leaf versus the top of the leaf throwing color because <laughs> who knows. I stopped trying to figure it out and I just like to appreciate it. Okay, everyone knows what this plant is because these are the seeds from it and I cannot for the life of me think of what it is. People might be yelling at the video right now telling me what it is, but I don't remember what it is. All of a sudden, I randomly shout out the name of a plant because I remembered. Okay. So definitely getting more into the flowers versus the leaves. That's more of that one. That's the one that we broke open. So it would lay a little bit flatter. So that is very vibrant. Oh my gosh. 
so gorgeous so gorgeous sometimes I think the flower is still on there and I try to scrape off what isn't there because the print is so unbelievably vivid that I think there's still petals on the page all right the yellow coming off these leaves is just amazing so this left a huge color it also lets some of that dark um, soaking water in all right this is a lot thinner paper so I have to be a little bit more careful with it but this is the paper yeah just regular printer paper obviously it picked up the prints just fine um, but you do have to be a little bit more careful with it because it tears so much more easily all right we'll keep going here I'm trying to figure out where to pull from so that i have the least likely for it to tear oh, very pretty oh that's gorgeous it's yellow with some red in it that is absolutely gorgeous uh oh is that a bug it's not a bug it's I don't know what it is, but it's not a bug. All right, let's pull some of these off. This was that bridal, I think it's called a bridal veil bush. So it actually got some really pretty color off of those leaves. Looks like we might have something blue underneath, but this is really pretty. It's yellow and then the yellow gets so dark, it almost looks red. That is beautiful. Woo! Okay, so this is a really big flower. Don't remember what it is. I think it might be some of my phlox. Just some really beautiful color here. I'm trying to figure out where this blue is coming from, but I think it's actually soaking through from the bottom. I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out. Okay, so we've got that. Yep, that's another bachelor button, and that's what's throwing off so much blue. I will have to remember this when I plant my garden next year to really do a lot with the bachelor button. Oh my gosh, this leaf down here, this is so beautiful. Oh my gosh. I'm kind of eco boil nerding out here a little bit. This is some of the linen paper. When it's wet, you can really, well, I can see it. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but you can really see almost like the fibers or the pattern that's in it. Looks like linen, as a matter of fact. So that'll be gorgeous. Put that in a journal. Oh, this is kind of pink. So pretty. Let's see. I can't believe all the different colors that have come out with the last leaf boil I did. Literally about 24 to 48 hours ago, I got almost no color off of anything. This is beautiful. This almost looks like a watercolor picture. I mean, the petals are just perfect. I might have to set this one aside. This one is so pretty. And then it looks like we've got some great color on the other side as well. And sometimes it depends on what you are using in the water. Sometimes it depends on if you're using alum, if you're not using alum, if you use elements of rust, if you're not using elements of rust, how long you boil the water for, how long you let it sit. Um, this is probably the shortest I've ever let a boil sit. I only let it sit after I completely turned off the heat about... I would say two and a half, three hours. Normally I let it sit at least six, if not overnight. Um, but knowing I had a lot to get done, I had to get it pulled and I was just hopeful that there would be some color, but this has really exceeded my expectations. So this has just been an amazing result. And when I'm all done here, 
then I get to find places all over the house to lay out all the papers. Fortunately, my husband is very patient and is very happy that I found something that makes me so happy. So when mama's happy, everybody's happy. So he tends to put up with all of my artsy tartsy shenanigans, usually with a smile and a nod. Right now he's trying to keep the dogs down in the basement so that they stop irritating us. Okay, I have to remember whatever this leaf is because this is making this almost like pinky lavender color and it is so pretty. I say I have to remember that. I never remember that. I never remember the names of the flowers. I never remember what happens when. Someone else commented on a video that said, oh, you should make a log or an inventory of the colors and what makes what colors, and I just laughed. And I said I admire them for their logical mind and their desire to categorize and make things organized, but that probably wasn't going to happen in my world. And I do love a good spreadsheet, but to me, to keep a spreadsheet on this would take some of the joy away. But for somebody else, keeping a spreadsheet would just add to their joy. But for me, I just, I just like playing with paper. That's all there really is to it. I just like playing with paper. I keep thinking that each sheet is my new favorite. Oh my gosh. Okay, I really do have to figure this out. Okay, I'm going to set this aside and then I'm going to go out tomorrow and try to refine those leaves. So I make a mental note to try to use those again. Those are gorgeous. I don't know if I've ever used those before because I know for a fact I have never gotten that color before. It's so beautiful. A little bit of blue popping through. I think there must be a blue flower a little bit farther down in the mix. So a lot of this is the really, really thin paper. We should be getting down to some of our last sheets here, which kind of makes me sad. There's part of me that just wants the pile to go on forever and ever and ever and ever and forever. Ooh, this is so thin, it is almost translucent. Ooh, ooh. Oh my gosh. That's pretty. That's pretty gorgeous. So this is Morning Glory Vine. And I know, because it's one of the first things I plunked down in here. And then that blue flower left no blue, basically, at all. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is it. This is the sad last sheet of paper. Love the lines from the cookie, the cookie rack, the baker's rack. Love the blue from the flowers, almost a purpley in there. Oh my gosh. So pretty. All right. Now I need to find space to lay all these out. I generally try to rinse them out just a little bit and then I try to lay them flat to dry. So once I get everything laid flat and dried I'll probably do a quick shot with the camera to pan across all the different sheets of paper and just show you maybe which ones turned out the best. I don't know. Is there really a best? I definitely know I have some favorites and I think it's every single sheet of this paper. But that is the joy. Woo! Oh dear. Should have laid that down a little bit more carefully. That is the joy of eco printing. You get all these gorgeous sheets of paper and all these amazing colors and it's an all natural process. So, Hello everybody. We're back to see the paper after it's been pressed and see how it looks. This is my homemade press. It's just two flat boards, some screws, washers, and wing nuts. Um, this is what I use to press out paper. Um, works really, really well. I made sure to leave the screws really long so that I have plenty of room to lift the boards up and 
squeeze my piles of paper in because of course when they're all bent up it's really hard to fit things in they're quite thick my dog just stole another piece of paper he feels like he just got away with something major these are the two pieces that I found after I'd already put the press together with my other paper. So I just stuck them underneath to flatten them out a little bit. Um, so these are the first two pieces of paper we'll look at. And so they are flat, but not super flat because they, they were not in the press. Um, but these look wonderful. I am so excited about this paper. So let's slide this out. That's everything. All right, we're in frame, looks like it. So this is a fairly small batch for me. Usually when I go to town on leaf boils, I will end up with a huge stack of paper just because as long as I'm gonna be running the leaf boil for that many hours, I really like to do as much paper as possible at one time. Um, I say that every batch is my favorite batch, but this one might actually be my favorite batch. This is so pretty. I mean, just the colors that popped out in it, super unexpected. I think that I said in one of my last videos that I had done another boil just like two days prior and I really just got nothing from it. This is that paper that, um, here, really quick. It looked like this to begin with. So it had some ridges in it. And then I opted to try using that for this pressing. And a lot of my ridges went out. A lot of the um, original personality of the paper left, but I still really like the effect because of the, the pressed lines that go across it. Those are not from the cookie sheets. That's just the way the paper was designed. So this is really pretty. We've got a lot of purples, um, grays. Oop, this is from the cookie sheet or the cookie rack for sure. You can hear my dog collar, my dog's collar jingling. He's running around trying to get me to notice that he got away with something. I'm not chasing him right now. So we got a lot of great prints from the leaves. Hopefully you can see all that. See that? See that right there? So cool. I like them. I like them a lot. This is some of the thinner paper. Um, you can see that there's like the center of a flower that's pressed into the paper there. So it makes kind of a divot on one side and a bump on the other. So this didn't press as flat as I would have liked, but I can always press it again. Um, this is some of the heavier cardstock paper. I like this. It almost looks like there's another page there. Like you could peel this apart and there would be two pages there. That just comes from the paper being stacked unevenly during the boil. And then that's where some of the liquid got in where that leaf stem made an, uh, like a route for water to get in while it was boiling. So really pretty. These are super vibrant. Um, I am going to go out right after this video and go try to find where I got these leaves from that made such um, distinct impressions on here. And I thought of the name of the flower. It's marigold. That's what these are, marigolds. I told you, like, everybody has them. But could I think of it at the time? No, I could not. But I did think of it later. Oop, there's a little bit of a flower left on the page. Sometimes I just leave that on there. My dog is back to tell me that he's going to try to get away with something else. And I'm going to ignore him for right now. So these are more of those really um, great leaves. Um, looks like they let some water in because it's kind of an indistinct pattern of the leaf, but you can see where it was. This must be two sheets that were folded together like this. So they were like this. Oh. And then it came through on the other side too and on this side. Oh, it's so pretty. I don't know if this is the right color or how to say it, but mauve, is that mauve kind of a purpley gray? 
Um, you can definitely see some definition from these flowers. Yep. There's a flower. I'm going to leave that. I'm just going to leave it on there. It is all snug on the page. So I'm just leaving it there. Looks like it wants to stay there. wants to live there. So I'm going to let it. This looks pretty good. Hang on. That. Okay. He got into paper he's really not supposed to get into. Okay. So another really great print. I just, yep, I'm going to go for it. I'm ignoring him. That's fine. This one is so pretty. I mean, it's got pink, yellow, purple, green. Oh, it's got all these great colors. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Oop, and this side has some blue. Okay, I'm going to go find all those plants. and I'm probably going to do another leaf boil just because I'm so excited about them. Let's see. Yep. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, this was some really dried up leaves that I didn't think was even going to uh, leave a print at all because they were kind of brittle, but uh, they did. So surprise, surprise. This is some more of that paper that started off with the lined, but you can barely see that they're in there now, but they're kind of there. I think it's a really cool effect for for journaling. Okay, this is the page that I said was absolutely my favorite. Like I said, this just looks like a watercolor. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. Can you see it? It's, it, I, I have no words. It's so pretty. Okay. I, like I have to set this one aside because I'm, it's so beautiful. I can't even stand it. Okay, you have to go set aside because I don't know. You might have to go into my journal. Just because I need to make sure that you're loved and appreciated appropriately. Okay. So this one, a lot of mauves. Mauve. Mauve. Mate. Mauve. I don't know. Anyway, pretty colors, pretty patterns. Uh, this is that top one that got a lot of color between the two boards. It's actually cool because it looks already like a book. That's so neat. Bright color from the leaves, definitely bright color from the leaves, and can you see this? This is that perfect outline of the center of, I think it's a zinnia, maybe, or a purple coneflower, but I don't think I used any of those. Gosh, gosh. Okay, more of this. Mm, it smells kind of good too. That is a really clear print of that flower. Very pretty. More of these leaves, which I'm just gonna run out and grab a whole bunch more. And, oh, this is my last one. Sad, 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 sad. You can see the outline of a leaf here. Looks like it kind of broke off or something up here. And more here. And oop, this is that one where you can see the stem and it's almost that negative effect. So cool. So these, oop, there's another one where there's a stem and sort of the negative effect. Love it. Okay, so that is the stack. And like I said, this is a pretty small stack. But it just makes me excited to go out and do another one. Because I love doing them. My husband deals with it and last night I had to press these out because I left them dry all over my craft room and I had to pick them up and of course they were hung over things and balanced on things and hung over the backs of chairs to dry and so they all dried in funny shapes and then every once in a while I'm gonna move the camera watch out for nausea cam if you want to see my really really not super organized thing Every once in a while, you find a little extra one that you forgot to press. It's like Christmas. You look up and you go, I didn't even know I hung one there. And there it is. So <laughs> this one will have to go back to the press. And that's fine. Whoop, that was really close. Sorry about the blurred image there. So here we go. And all right. Bye. That's it. Till the next time.